1972. It was the year BMW Motorsport was created, intent on dominating the racing circuit, beginning with the European Touring Car Championship and the European Formula 2 Championship. To do this, the engineers created the 3.0 CSL, known as the Batmobile for its radical aerodynamic wing. Soon after came the first vehicle bearing the M stripes and the M badge. It was called the M1, designed by Giorgetto Gigiaro in Turin, Italy. In 1979 and 1980, Formula One legends Niki Lauda and Nelson Piquet led a field of competitors in identical M1s in the Pro Car Series. In 1979, Andy Warhol's colorfully painted M1 art car took sixth place in the overall rankings after 300 laps at Le Mans. And in 1981, the M1 won the GTO class in IMSA competition in the USA. The heart of the M1 was its engine, based on the six-cylinder in the racing CSL. It powered a whole generation of future M cars, including the first M6, also known as the M6 35 CSI, a spelt, nimble GT coupe. In 1982, BMW made its Formula One debut, with Nelson Piquet at the wheel and the most powerful F1 engine ever produced. More than 1,200 horsepower, going on to win the Formula One championship the following year. The original M3 also was created to score victories at the track. With the M3, we created the first touring car at that time with a welded roll cage system which was much stiffer than the aluminum bolted system and it was even lighter. That gave us a big advantage and still today, I mean, you, you find that concept in our cars. We have very stiff bodies. It's a basis for a good suspension. It's a good basis for performance. Roberto Ravalle won the inaugural World Touring Car title in 1987 in an M3. And M3s dominated the European Touring Car Group A Championship racking up over 1,500 victories, including a string of grueling 24-hour races, making it the most successful touring car of all time. I think the A30 M3 was so successful because it only had a four-cylinder engine, but it was the first of that high-revolution concept engine. So it had more than 200 horsepower, and it had such a precise suspension and such good controls and aerodynamically, it was so great. That, I think, made it an absolute success, not only on the racetrack, but also on the road. And, and still today, I mean, we have a big uh, community out there who, who love to drive with the E30 M3. The second generation M3 entered racing in the 1995 season. This new M3 had a six-cylinder engine and competed in as close to stock production trim as possible. Except for pistons, camshaft, and wider tires, virtually everything was original BMW production parts. The 1982 Brabham BMW Formula One car had been the first race car to use digital engine management, and the technology was later transferred to M cars. Yet in 2000, it was the M3 and M5 engineers who developed the advanced engine electronics for the BMW F1 race cars. The extraordinary V8 engine in the current M3 is a descendant of the V8 which powered the M3 GTR, built for the American Le Mans series in 2001. We developed that car only in six months to put it to Sebring for the first race. And after some little hiccups in the early stage, then it was very successful. So we could win the manufacturer's title, the driver's title, the team title. In the United States, Team PTG campaigned the M3 for 11 years, winning 14 championships, including back-to-back -back wins at the 24 Hours of Daytona and the Sebring 12-hour race, and three professional GT manufacturers' championships. The new fourth-generation M3 will compete in the American Le Mans series starting in 2009. Team Rahal will campaign the M3s on behalf of BMW Motorsport and BMW of North America. The return of BMW marks the 10th anniversary of the BMW V12's historic victories at the 12 hours of Sebring and the 24 hours of Le Mans. Those M genes and racing genes superabound in, in the heads and hearts of our employees. 
A lot of those people really are racers, they are motorsport enthusiasts. So they make sure with all their racing experience and their know-how, their technical competence, that we get the best of all worlds. We get the race car-like engines, we get very good handling suspensions, we get direct response, precision, and a lot of power. And uh, that is what I think those people bring into every M car and every M driver really can experience in an exciting way. Created for the most discerning drivers in the world, M models uniquely combine power, agility, and innovation unlike any other vehicle. But just how is this high-performance automotive icon crafted at M? It all starts in the BMW, fits in the BMW Research and Development Center, where the base car for an M car comes to life. It's a 3 Series, a 5 Series, a 6 Series, and it's a very good basis to start from. So we start with a BMW, and then we make a BMW M. To make an M car out of a regular BMW is in fact uh, very difficult because uh, regular BMWs are already have all the attributes of a real nice, sporty, luxurious car. We let them move ahead uh, in their development and then we jump on a little later where they have a more defined, a more a ripened uh, concept. We start from there to see what has to be improved, what has to be changed. Typically, more than 50% of the components in an M car are new and M specific. Also als Beispiel für den neuen M3, wir haben es mal ausgerechnet, es sind weit über 80%, die wir gegenüber dem Serienfahrzeug modifiziert haben. It's a brakes, it's a steering system, shock absorber, springs, anti-roll bars. Not that it's only differently adjusted, but the parts itself is different. Außer einem Längslenker an der Hinterachse wurde alles neu konzipiert. Und zwar mit der, mit der Zielsetzung Gewicht, Präzision, neue Kinematik. All dies führt eben dazu, dass die angesprochene Rückmeldung des Fahrzeuges weiter optimiert wird. Bremsenseitig wurde natürlich an die Leistung angepasst. Es kamen neue Bremsscheiben, größer dimensioniert mit optimiertem Gewicht zum Einsatz und darauf angepasst werden muss natürlich auch wieder der Fahrzeugregler, also sprich ABS, DSC. Es ist sehr wichtig, to reduce the weight as much as possible on an M car, because every kilogram that you don't need to accelerate, that you don't need to slow down, that makes a car better. At M, there is an unusually close relationship between engineering, physics and design. At M Design, we have even our own engineers in our department sitting directly beside the designers. So it's not so free as designers maybe in other departments because the result of the M car is the only thing that counts. The motor engineers came to us and said that if we can deliver a little bit more room for the engine, then they can deliver more torque. The reason was we need more air volume above the engine. So the designer decided to make this power dome and made this power dome to beautiful design element and the motor engineers were very satisfied. Wenn wir einen neuen Motor entwickeln wollen, ist sicherlich einmal entscheidend, was wir uns selber vorstellen und wünschen. Zum anderen fragen wir uns natürlich auch und fragen unsere Kunden selber, was denn sie von einem neuen M-Fahrzeug, von einem neuen M-Motor erwarten. Engineers simulate the possibilities of every new engine on paper, then on the computer. Later, the engine designer gives it shape using computer-aided design. In the engine prototype workshop, hundreds of parts are assembled entirely by hands that know the shape and feel of every component. Once the prototype is ready for testing, it is installed in the dynamometer chamber. Inside walls 12 inches thick for safety, it runs at speeds up to 186 miles per hour while the exhaust reaches red-hot temperatures. When the engine is ready for the road, then real-world testing begins on the long-distance test rig, simulating racing speeds and maneuvers around the clock. But nothing beats the real torture test at Germany's most demanding and legendary racetrack, the Nürburgring Nordschleife. 
ganz etwas Faszinierendes, mit einem neuen Auto, mit einem neuen Prototyp über die Nordschleife zu fahren. Man kennt nichts von dem Auto, man, weiß nur, man kennt nur die Nordschleife, man hört jedes Geräusch, man ist von jeder Reaktion des Autos fasziniert. We have those very well experienced and competent testing engineers and they know how to adjust all those different components. They are working in, in little steps to adjust the shock absorber, a little more and more rebound here. There's no computer out there that could do that. You need those people who understand how those components interact and then you get to that high level of performance. That is the magic of M. One of these special M testing engineers is Bernd Lima, integration manager of the new M3. He drove the car hundreds of laps, changing parts, tweaking the suspension settings, and seeing how these differences improved the handling. Every new lap is a new experience, and only a little bit is changing, and then the behavior of the car or of your, of your driving is completely different. Die Prototypen sind mit jeder Menge Messtechnik ausgestattet, die jeden Bereich des Fahrzeugs messen oder kontrollieren. Aber darüber hinaus ist halt auch der, der Sinn des Testfahrers gefragt, der mit seinen eigenen Körpersinnen halt viele Reaktionen oder das Auto einfach spüren muss. Wie verhält es sich in der Kurve und ist halt ein wichtiges Messinstrument, das Popometer, was man so kennt. The Popo is basically the seat of the pants and the meter is a meter. And basically, it defines everything what the driver, what a, an engineer feels when he's testing the car. Other companies try to copy that M feeling. And they might put hundreds of computers and sensors in a car. But for this final refinement, we only need one sensor. And that's a very well experienced M testing engineer. When we like the car, when we defined it and made it to, to our own pleasure. Most of our engineers are drivers and race drivers themselves. When we are pleased with it, then we say, okay, that's it, how an M car should be like. And then we sign it off. Every open stretch of straightaway, every adrenalizing lap on the track, offers further proof that M is the most powerful letter in the world. Achieving that level requires great vision. M philosophy is to basically take a production car with all the utility, all the amenities of a production car and add to this the performance of a real sports car, almost a race car. Ein Brötchen holen in die Stadt fahren, kann da gemütlich durchgrüßen, um danach, wenn er dann sein Brötchen genossen hat, auf die Rennstrecke zu gehen um eventuell seine persönlichen Bestzeiten für diesen Tag noch mal zu optimieren. M-Cars are not tuned. Rather, BMW M crafts every aspect of its vehicles in total harmony. Es reicht uns also nicht, nur einen starken Motor in eine Karosserie einzubauen um, und einen anderen Dämpfer dazu äh, zu entwickeln und fertig ist das Auto. Nein, alle Bauteile in diesem Fahrzeug sind speziell auf dieses Gesamtkonzept abgestimmt. M stands for Motorsport. A company within a company that BMW founded in 1972. The M1 was the first M-badged car. It was quite amazing when Paul Roche in the 70s put the M1 sports car engine, which was very close to a race car engine, into a regular 5 Series sedan. Nobody expected that a 5 Series BMW could be that fast. That created a lot of sensation because the car was performing like a sports car and had the character of a race car. It looked more or less like a regular 5 Series. But the Porsche driver on the Autobahn, I mean, he would know sooner or later what kind of 5 Series that was. BMW M is a skunk works by design, owned by yet independent from BMW. Everyone at M has a passion for racing gasoline flowing through their veins. We have people in the company who worked on the 1983 Formula One engine where Nelson Piquet became world champion. We have people who joined the Le Mans program. They were working on the M3 GTR. And we have people who were working on the Formula One V8 engine from last year. So that is a special breed of people here. 
and they have those M genes in the heart and their head. Bei der BMW M GmbH zu arbeiten ist natürlich die Idealvorstellung. Man kann Hobby zum Beruf machen. Wir haben hier nur Autofans. Wir können hier unsere Autos entwickeln, wie wir sie uns selber vorstellen. Das ist perfekt. Und natürlich ist immer der beste Motor der letzte, den man entwickelt hat. Das ist in dem Fall der neue Motor für den M3, der S65. M craftsmanship is extremely particular with every phase of the design. The M design language is a very clear, powerful and very engineered driven language for the designer. And that means everything we do has a reason, a really physical reason. Doing M design means listening to the people around us, engineers, test drivers, ergonomics. It's driver oriented. The thickness of the steering wheel, the diameter of the steering wheel, the seat position. We try to bring everything in a balance that the driver is relaxed and can concentrate on the road. Everything we do is for the reason to be able to drive this car fast. Everything the M designer does has an outcome on performance, especially lap times on the legendary Nürburgring Nordschleife racetrack. I have ganz taufrisch eine Zeitung, eine eine Motorsport Zeitung in die Hand bekommen, war ein Journalist in der Lage in beinahe acht Minuten den Nürburgring zu umrunden. Das sind fabelhafte Zeiten, die nur Sport extreme Sportwagen erreichen. If you go around fast corners, the N engine has to be capable of handling such situations with those high accelerations, like in a race car engine. So it's lightweight, it's efficient, it loves to rev up high, it has a low mass inertia, so you can really crank it up easily to the rev limiter. It has an incredible sound, but maybe a little bit different from a race car engine, it's very reliable and robust. From the high revving engines to the extremely responsive steering, chassis and brakes, an M car is engineered to give the driver a heightened awareness of how the car is interacting with the road. All the controls are very responsive and very sensitive. So the way you can activate the throttle and the way the engine responses, how responsive, how close, how direct, how tight that is, that is really unique. And also if you apply the brakes, the way how the brakes really then slow the car down and the feedback that you get from the brake pedal into your foot, you know exactly when you will stop the wheel on the tarmac. The end customer is unique and very demanding. The senses of a driver of a customer in this case have to be pleased and if you just give them uh, whatever he's used to he's very quickly bored you need to give them experiences and feelings what he doesn't find in other cars with the M cars we try to touch all those senses so that the driving experience is a very emotional way of driving instead of just a piece of transportation they are racers, they are not regular people. They want to be in front, they want to lead, they want to be fast. And I think it's always a little bit of a fight between the machine and the man. So to be able to get everything out of an M car, to really bring it to the limit and then control an M car at the limit, I think this is what our M car drivers enjoy. In the small, unassuming town of Garching, BMW develops its most powerful and innovative vehicles. This is M headquarters, yet it's only one of several facilities involved in M craftsmanship. Designs begin in nearby Munich. The challenge for an M designer is that he starts with a beautiful BMW product. And now he's thinking about what he can change, how much he can change, how much he must change for our customers, which are different customers. Once a sketch of a new M model is approved, the designers use tape to refine the proportions of a vehicle at actual size. In the modeling studio, designers finally get to see the three-dimensional car. Clay is reshaped based on input from aerodynamics testing in the wind tunnel. The wind tunnel is so important for M design because of the results of the wind tunnel. If we get a downforce in the front more than in the rear, that's okay. But if we get much more than on the rear, that's not okay for the driver. The results not always are the results a designer likes to have. 
but he has to live this and has to react and bring this in a beautiful, interesting form. On the new M3, the designers added a diffuser and a spoiler in the rear to achieve the correct aerodynamic balance. We have our main facility in Garching, where we do all the suspension and vehicle development, and where we have the workshops where we build the prototype cars. Every M prototype is built by hand here, including the selection of fine Bavarian hides for the seats and hand-stitching the M steering wheel with the characteristic blue, violet, and red thread. The first prototypes are equipped with a computer, electrical monitors, and thousands of sensors to track the performance of every component of the new M car as it takes to the roads around the M workshop in Garching. M engines are developed in the Presenstrasse facility in Munich. Here we are in the center of the M motor development in the Versuchsmotor Werkstatt. Here we have our secret first prototype motors per hand together. Wir haben hier bei uns bei der MGMBH acht Motorprüfstände, sechs Stationärprüfstände und zwei dynamische Prüfstände. Auf denen können wir das komplette Fahrzeug simulieren. Zum Schluss gehen wir mit dem Motor ins Fahrzeug und testen einmal in Miramar im Süden Frankreich auf einer BMW eigenen Messstrecke. Und die Königsdisziplin ist der Nürburgring. Da wird ein M-Fahrzeug immer auf Herz und Nieren getestet. Other manufacturers do some testing at the ring. But BMW M was first to establish a permanent test center here. It is an integral part of the development and sign-off process. We are testing since the 70s all of our cars up there on the Nürburgring. It's one of the oldest racetracks in Europe. And the name of that racetrack is also the Green Hell. Yeah, the Nürburgring is very special, first for the length, 20.8 kilometers. It gives you a good opportunity to evaluate a car for a long time. Then the up and downs, to travel in the springs and out of the springs. There are many, many points like in Pflanzgarten, like Hüttelbacherhöhe, where you can test it. And at the end, there are 73 corners and only two straight lines. Basically, it's really demanding on every little aspect of the car, on the chassis, on the tire, on the brakes, on the engine, the transmission, everything. This shows exactly how the car will behave in the dynamic driving conditions out in the real world. The M test center allows engineer test drivers to bring the development vehicle in and make instant adjustments before heading back out again. We have to change tires, brakes, suspension parts, shocks, springs, and so on and so forth several times during the day. Back in Munich, the engines are assembled with meticulous craftsmanship. Bei unseren M-Motoren ist es sicher so, dass noch ein Großteil Handarbeit ist. Und da haben wir Spezialisten seit vielen Jahren bei uns in der Firma, die diese Erfahrung einbringen, diese Motoren perfekt montieren zu können. When every element of the new car has been perfected, it is produced on the same production lines as the series cars. In Dingolfing for the M5 and M6 and Regensburg for the M3. In the vehicle assembly plant, the M engine joins up with the M chassis. BMW calls this moment the marriage. Special equipment is used to tighten the screws in an M car to ensure a stiff structure, vital to the M car's renowned handling. The carbon fiber roof is attached in a separate facility using an ultra-advanced bonding process. The big challenge was really to uh, get uh, the adhesive right, and that means we have to control the bonding process very, very tight. We had to make sure that the temperature is always in the right tolerances, that the humidity is in the right tolerances, and that all the facilities are always working to perfect conditions. Because that is very, very important for the stiffness of the car. The finished M car is the result of all the ideas, craftsmanship, and experience found at BMW M. The people who work here, they love cars and they like to drive in a special way. They want that feeling of how a car should handle, how it should sound. And we basically have the freedom in creating the car which pleases us and therefore we think it also pleases our specific end customer.